Greetings and welcome to the January 2024 edition of the Fraser Valley Presale Pulse, bringing you the latest real estate intelligence on the Valley's presale and resale marketplace over the past 30 days. I'm Susanna Gonsalves. And I am Brittany Reimer. Today, our cameras take you inside the yet to be revealed Ashley by Peterson Presentation Center. You're witnessing an exclusive preview before it opens to the public. Now, these new uh, Vancouver Westside residences are a limited collection featuring one, two, and three bedroom concrete Westside homes nestled on the quiet tree-lined Ash Street. Now, mark your calendars for a realtor event happening on January 31st, followed shortly by their grand opening public event. Really looking forward to it yeah you should come in just to see the marble in the show suite oh worth it so let's get started how has the pre-sale market in the fraser valley been looking Britt? yeah well um it's definitely been a bit quiet over the holidays but i think we can begin to anticipate people coming out of that holiday hibernation uh, and gear up for activity to begin uh over the next few weeks now after the latest announcement last month where rates continue to hold steady i think consumers are really becoming more uh, and more confident about the fact that interest rates will s slowly begin to decline in 2024. Uh, this will likely bring a renewed in energy and interest into our Fraser Valley real estate market. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, and I think Lunar New Year will also become a great catalyst for this renewed interest. We see some of the biggest incentives being offered around this time of year. And with a softer market than normal, it wouldn't be surprising to see more really attractive ones being marketed. Now, last year was a really standout year in this regard. We saw some major promotions come to market, some of the biggest we've ever seen. Absolutely. And Suze, what are your thoughts? Are we expecting to see some of those big uh, Lunar New Year uh, promotions this year? Yeah, it's tough to say. Now, obviously, we're still in a soft market and buyers today often expect to feel like they're winning or getting a good deal. At the same time, the overall positioning of supply is different than last year. In certain markets, we saw huge releases of product in Q3 and Q4 of 2023. A lot of these projects were able to achieve 60% or more sales. And because of that, likely do not feel the same urgency to move the remaining product. They may feel comfortable slow walking this, offering some incentives, but really waiting for the market to return in full a little later in the year. You absolutely nailed that. That is exactly what we've been seeing over the last few months. Um, you know, speaking of product types, I've been reflecting uh, on 2023, and it seems that wood frame condos and townhomes mostly ruled the Fraser Valley market no surprise there with a few concrete towers sprinkled into that mix however um, it is starting to look like the concrete towers are going to be the talk of the town uh, 2024 or at least in surrey city center for the next little while which i love to see yeah that's right Red intersect which is the second phase of parkway by boza has begun previewing piano by concord pacific is expected to launch soon along with juno by Streetside developments and we're also expecting Sky Living to launch phase two sometime in the spring. And lastly, Georgetown 3 by Anthem recently had their development permit approved and is anticipated to come to market as well. Love to see a lot of new homes come into the market and a lot of really big name uh, developers that uh, you just shared. So it, I, I really feel like this is starting to feel like uh, the Metro Town in some ways all over again. A handful of concrete towers that are launching in close proximity, one after another. Um, and here we are. Yeah, I, it is, uh, doesn't seem to have some parallels. Developers are also becoming more confident uh, in launching their projects, and so we're looking at a, an active fall, especially an area like Surrey City Centre, where the UBC expansion and SkyTrain expansion makes it a prime location for investors and end users alike. Yeah, and since we're already on the topic of concrete launches in Surrey, um, let's, keep it, uh, let's keep it rolling and dive right into some of the features uh, and chat a little bit more in depth about these projects. Yeah, let's begin with the second phase of Parkway by Boza Properties. So this phase will be a 52-story tower known as the Intersect. Love that name, different for sure. Uh, and will consist of 396 homes ranging in studios uh, all the way up to three bedroom and dens. Um, in addition to the 396 strata units, the tower will also have 221 purpose-built rental units uh, within it. I heard that these rental units were originally supposed to be office spaces, but Boza has now repurposed them into rental units. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was part of a really smart decision actually on their part, given the rental market right now. Um, I anticipate the rental units will be uh, of high demand, uh, more so than office space anyways, as Surrey City, City Centre continues to grow. Absolutely. I think this is also a strategic move for Boza. 156 of these rental units will be replacing the required rental units for their next master plan community in Surrey City Centre, which will replace Bristol Estates. Now, I remember Parkway One being an incredible success when they launched. They basically sold out of, of all release units within a month. Not to take away from what a solid product Boza has offered, but they really did launch at the right time for phase one. It was near peak pricing with high demand and low inventory. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the sales to listing ratio for condos in the Fraser Valley was 90% the month before their launch. 
Well, those were the days. Those were the days. Um, It was a perfect storm for them. It's such a sought after product uh, to be launching at that time. Now, I'm really interested to see how phase two will fare as they're entering into a much softer market dynamic than what we saw in 2022. Not only that, but they will also be up against a lot of competition with multiple anticipated launches from big name developers within the same area. Yeah, my guess is that uh, we are going to be seeing some um, pretty competitive incentive offerings um, for all of these projects, um, some smart marketing tactics and campaigns to try to set them apart from their competitors. I've seen some really great stuff already out there over the last two weeks. So um, the bar is going to be raised for sure in Surrey. Now let's move on to our next project, and surprise, surprise, it's another tower launching in Surrey City Centre. We're talking about Juno by Streetside Developments. This development will consist of a 33-storey high-rise attached to a six-storey podium and is anticipated to bring 341 units into the neighbourhood. This will actually be Streetside's first concrete build. Yeah, very, very exciting news um, for this group, for the Streetside Qualico team. Um, It does make me wonder how they'll fare against some of these other high-rise developments coming into the area, although um, they do have such a strong developer reputation and brand, specifically in the Fraser Valley market behind them, which is a great thing. Yeah, it definitely sounds like they will have some tough competition, but rumor on the street is that they will be pricing pretty competitively. A little better to me that they are looking at a blended price of square foot between $990 to $1,000 per square foot. Yes, I heard this. Um, I believe that this is going to actually be a really attractive uh, offering to potential purchasers, as is well below um, concrete product in Surrey that has launched over the past couple of years. Uh, we also know that concrete uh, projects such as Bosa and Concord are usually priced at a premium, so this could actually be an attractive option option for those um, and and maybe that would otherwise be priced out of the market. I will say, I feel like that Surrey market needs to be at, you know, a 1100 to 1150 minimum in most cases to make projects feasible. So definitely, I suspect they're looking for strong absorptions because I, I don't know how other com- a competitive product will, will, will compete with that. Now, with that kind of pricing, Juno could also become competition for some people that were originally looking at wood frame, especially since I heard they're offering a 10% deposit as well. Yeah, they're checking a lot of boxes here. Um, it looks like they will be offering three bedrooms with lock-off suites, um, which is a first for uh, Surrey City Towers. Um, but that 10% deposit is like awfully, awfully attractive. Now, lock-off suites have been rising in popularity as of late, um, and it's going to be interesting to see how these uh, sort of larger units continue to fare. Um, as uh, as we see more of them come to market. Yeah. If the rumors are true, it really sounds like it's going to be a great uh, product and market. It'll come out with a big bang, provide some fierce competition uh, for other projects in Surrey. We talked a little bit about removing that barrier to entry in the last couple of weeks. They're doing it right. Now let's move on to other resale stats. Uh, sales activity continues to slow down month over month. Um, as we saw 837 resales for the month of December. While this marks an increase in activity compared to, dis- to last December, sales still remain 27% below the 10 year average for number of sales in December. Overall, the Fraser Valley ended the year with a total of just over 14,000 sales, which is 23% below the 10-year average and actually represents the lowest annual sales recorded in the past 10 years. No surprise, it's been a tough uh, year for the market as we face some of the highest interest rates we've, we've seen. However, hope is on the horizon. These rates really have remained static for the past few announcements, and we do anticipate uh, to slowly decrease through 2024. Yeah, and we shouldn't forget that 2021 in the Fraser Valley was a banner year. Absolutely. Not just for sales absorptions, but for price appreciation as well. So it's not really a surprise that you would see that drop off when the market changed the way that it did. Now, I do think many of us are just playing the waiting game now, waiting for that first decrease to begin before re-entering the market. It looks like sales aren't the only figures to have dropped off month over month. We're seeing a total inventory decline by over 25% in December. And while this may sound like a large decrease, it's not actually as worrisome as it sounds. Yeah, that's correct. Um, This big dip uh, in total inventory is actually very common between the months of November and December um, as the holidays approach, so seasonal. Um, In fact, the average change in inventory between these two months is usually around 28%. Exactly. And when we dive deeper, we can see that we are over 15% above the 10-year average for total inventory in December. So December has actually been the only month in all of 2023 where total inventory has been above the 10-year average. All other months, we've been anywhere from 2 to 33% below this average. Yeah. Now, decreased demand mixed with increased supply sort of sounds like the perfect storm for any buyer looking to get into the market. Wouldn't you say so, Suze? Absolutely. It sure does. 
Uh, speaking of buyers, how is pricing looking? Yeah, so the prices uh, in the Fraser Valley have continued to decrease for the fifth month in a row. Benchmark pricing for all product types across the Fraser Valley currently sits at uh, just under a million dollars, declining 1.5% from the previous month. Now, while this has increased from the previous year, we are still sitting 17% below peak values seen in March 2022. Yeah. Overall, I feel like there is a sense of optimism for the Fraser Valley market. Really exciting to see um, what happens on the pre-sale side with with the Surrey uh, condos, as we shared. Um, and we're expecting uh, a good couple good couple months here. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, uh, all eyes on uh, Bank of Canada again this year. Put those announcement dates in your calendar. Absolutely. <laughs> those are hard locked in my calendar. <laughs> Well, Brett, I believe that wraps us up for another episode of the Fraser Valley Pre-Sale Pulse. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Newswire, our daily email newsletter providing you with the latest real estate news. We want you to stay informed on real estate intelligence. Yeah, thank you for joining us for this uh, January's Pre-Sale Pulse. We'll be seeing you next month.